We are living through the next industrial revolution. I can't even guess what software is going to look like in five years, and I'm on the forefront of this. The three main areas where AI is going to make a huge difference to businesses are operational efficiency and automation, business intelligence, and customer engagement. Even the biggest and best companies that I won't mention any names still leave most of their customers with their user experience extremely wanting. Every human is still human. I mean, we have the saying literally, I'm only human. Artificial intelligence is an extremely wide term and it covers things like machine learning, classification, voice interface, natural language processing, image recognition, video processing, and more and more and more, right? It could mean a whole bunch of different things, but at its very core, it's being able to do something computationally that previously only a human being could do. And then I could just be like, give it a database. It's an enabling technology, which means it doesn't just produce a thing, an image, a piece of text, a decision. Those are the, the nuts and bolts of it. But overall, it allows everyone doing whatever they're doing to do it better, faster, less error prone, on a bigger scale. It's just going to make everyone doing almost whatever they're doing better. And there's very few industries that are immune to that. The whole waterline of the entire world of business is about to increase in quality and decrease in cost simultaneously. And of course, that's a boat you want to catch. The main benefits that AI can give to businesses, uh, operational efficiency, which is automation, uh, it's figuring out how you can do what you're already doing better or how you can improve what you're doing. You've got business intelligence, which is you know, all of the deep learning and, and figuring out from data what your decision should be. You've got machine learning, which, you, which can see correlations between things you can't. And then you've got customer engagement, which would be things like chatbots. You've got personalized uh, marketing, where you can have one-on-one -on -one channels, where everything, every communication you get from, from a business feels like it's just to you. And that's a massive game changer. So we've been pushing automation for many years, and uh, we've got good rules-based automation in a lot of sectors and a lot of systems, but they require very rigid data, right? You know, if this, then that. If uh, this email comes in and has this exact phrase in it, then we know what process to kick off. Uh, now with large language models that can reason on the information, can see, it can fully understand what it's looking at and go, oh, I know what this is. I know what the uh, sentiment behind this is. I know what the reason for this is. I know who they did this with, who it's to, why, all those things. You can now have an AI layer that can make decisions that previously only a human could make. So you basically just tell it what you want. This is the new thing, this is the new paradigm. It allows you to take fuzzy data in, like a, an email or a tweet, or something that could be, it's not specifically, yes, I've clicked that button, it's just you know from the context that this is that thing. And then you can kick off that workflow or do whatever you would have done with your rules-based system. We have approvals done in many different ways. There's a whole bunch of rules associated. The level of intelligence that it has at the moment means that you know 80% of your workload of a normal human being could just be given to that. Because most of the time, most of us day to day aren't making you know, deal-breaking decisions 100% of the time, right? You're dealing with mostly pretty tick and flick kind of stuff. And now you can get an AI to do all that boring, unengaging, uninteresting stuff for you and only involve the human element when it needs it. Oh yeah, for sure, and you can say publish that. It's it's really publish it. For the foreseeable future, we're not going to have fully autonomous agents going off and just doing things on their own without any oversight. I think that we're a long way away from that. What we're going to have is people working with AI, people being augmented by AI, and just being able to produce substantially more and better content than they had previously. You'll be making better decisions, writing better emails, make, you know, sending better reports, putting better content out into the world. Everything that a human being does now, they'll be able to do better. The productivity tools that we're already using, so Office tools or your Gmail tools or Google Suite tools, are all getting these co-pilots built into them. So this user interface and this user experience is going to become ubiquitous everywhere and it's going to become a, yeah, a, an expected part of the user experience.
With business intelligence, we, in the last six years, I would say, since Power BI became a big thing and, and uh, Tableau has always been great as well, we've been able to create visualizations that allow human beings to make fairly good sense of data if you have a good data scientist there to put it all together. Now we have deep learning and machine learning tools that can look at your data and they can look at completely unstructured data and they can work out correlations, they can work out peak times where you're likely to have uh, customers come in, they can start to predict things. So you've got predictive analytics as well as just looking at previous periods. Things like fraud detection, which is where a computer will start to see, okay, you flagged these 1,000 uh, instances of fraud as fraudulent, and I'm seeing the patterns behind the scenes that show me that that's fraudulent, which means then when you give me more data, I can see, no, that one's fine, that one's fine. Oh, that one might be fraud. It's something that it involves everyone. Uh, the other one would be for compliance. So on your internal data, uh, you know that you need to be compliant to some government regulation for X, Y, Z. It can keep track of that for you. Instead of having someone constantly looking and checking and seeing if, if you're all good, you can have AI behind the scenes just making sure and saying, hey, heads up, I think you're veering off course on this. You're not compliant in this area anymore. You need to fix that. The big winners of this AI rush will be the people who own all the data, which is why people like Microsoft, people like Facebook, Meta, uh, people like Google, who have so much information about their customers or about the market, are winning at the moment. Right? They're the ones who are able to train the models and come up with this information. They are not the only people who can run machine learning algorithms. If you have a lot of information on your customers, or you can buy the data that you need on your customers, you can make much more personalized recommendations. You can understand them and what they need much better. You can predict what they might need ahead of time. Uh, you can do planning for sales forecasting. You can do it for uh, you know, spikes in demand. You know when they're coming ahead of time so you can have your logistics train worked out ahead of time as well. And again, that can all be automated as well. Personalized marketing is about to take off in a huge way and every business will end up doing that to some extent or be very left behind. You've got chatbot interfaces, which you, know, you can speak directly to the business and get your, your questions answered. It's sometimes going to a website of a business that does a lot of things can be overwhelming. You don't know where to go to find the information you need. Well, imagine you had a sales rep sitting at the front desk who you could say, hey, uh, how does this work? And they just told you, well, every business has that now in their chatbots. And then you've got recommendation engines, uh, which are things like you know, Amazon or Netflix or whatever, give you what they think you want to see next. So you've bought this thing, well, this other thing is commonly bought with that thing, so would you want like this thing too? And it's just giving people more of what they want and lowering the barrier to them buying. It's giving people the right thing at the right time in the way that they want it. And it's a better experience for the business, it's a better experience for the user, it's a massive win win. Most jobs require a multimodal approach, right? You need to be able to deal with voice conversations, you need to be able to deal with text or emails. And then you also need to have a broader context of understanding, right, which part of the business am I in, who am I communicating with, and who and why and when. And all of that requires different understanding and different AI models to work out when should I trigger this action, what should happen, who should it be sent to, and all those, all those micro decisions is what we are thinking of all day every day. Well now we have AI tools that can do the same. So Semantic Kernel is the glue that holds all of the AI tools and models together. So for instance, Semantic Kernel could have a machine learning model that works out when it needs to produce some content, and then when it gets that trigger, it then says, all right, now we need ChatGPT to come up with a marketing newsletter that needs to be sent out to a slice of our CRM, and you have another AI model that works out how to do the segmentation of that CRM so it knows who to send it to. You can have a lot of different intelligence of different types all in the one big overarching system. The level of efficiency that someone like Amazon has already, now everyone will have. Oh, so it decides the problems. This is a massive pie, and you've got to work out which slice is right for you to start with, and that will be different with every business. So come and talk to us. Let's sit down, have a one-hour meeting. We'll get an AI expert in the room. We'll have a look at your business, and we'll tell you where we think you should start. We are here to guide you directly down that path to work out exactly how you end up one of those companies who is able to seize the opportunity and really do well.